but cold Monday morning uh, where we're celebrating the feast of the conversion of St Paul. Uh, so uh, let's pray for the unity of the church uh, at the end of this week of prayer for that intention and to ask St Paul for his prayers for us to effect a conversion within us. And uh, at the beginning of this session, as always, uh, we ask for the prayers of our Blessed Lady uh, and St Paul. So and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And St Paul, the Apostle of the Gentiles, pray for us. So as ever, Hello, Father. Good morning. <laughs> Surprised to see you here. We must stop meeting <laughs> like this. The sun is shining directly in my face. I must be glowing. Oh, well, yes, absolutely. It's not because I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't look anything like Bernie Sanders. You're well, yes. half expecting <laughs> to show up that you think of as Bernie. Yes, it's very right. amusing. Yes. But it's, uh, as ever, lovely to have this session. Yes. And what are you talking about today? Is it football today, Father? Or is it must be, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thy kingdom come. <laughs> Thy kingdom come. Yes. Now, before we begin, mm -hmm. we want to say a thank you to all of our loyal viewers who encourage us and yes. many send us messages don't yes, they, they and, do, uh, yes. and uh, you know <laughs> I don't know that we would ever say that we know what we're doing <laughs> we just sort of uh, yes, talk yeah. yes <laughs> and it's largely unscripted we have a brief conversation before we come on but what, what we talk about um, seems to uh, you know please people yes. that we, we aim yes. to please but uh, we're glad if it edifies you, and uh, by the grace of God, I think it's affected great things in people's souls, mm -hmm. especially in this time when it's rather difficult. Yes. To, it's nice to invite you into our house, mm -hmm. uh, and thank you for inviting us into yours to, yes. to um, you know, discuss these things together. Realise that we never believe in a vacuum exactly. on our own, yes. but we believe as part of the church, and perhaps our togetherness is something we're not always yes. uh, aware of at the moment. Indeed, it is an appropriate considering the Our Father and when we spoke first we spoke about the word hour but we always yes. in a sense pray together we yes. pray as the church even when we pray alone when we're in our room as our Lord told us to pray yes. in our hearts we are still praying as part of the body of Christ and in these discussions and conversations maybe our minds can be raised up yes. to the fact that we are united in the one faith, the sacraments That's it. And, and the one Lord. And those at home praying, you are not on your own exactly. pray, you're with the whole church and we're yes. praying for all of you, those we know and love from around mm -hmm. here and those who join us from abroad. So you're all in our prayers and many, many thanks for your support for us. Please pray for us and for vocations to this canonry. Absolutely. And if and if you want to join, please write to me. Yes. And, uh, you know, and uh, let's pray for each other in these mm. times. So, yes. carry on sharing the faith. Yes, thy kingdom come. So I thought we might uh, start, perhaps, with a notion of how God's kingdom can be... Um, reached or we can try to apply the principles of God's kingdom here on earth. We start from a principle that, of course, life in this world is never going to be perfect. No. And we can see from recent history, the last 100, 150 years particularly, that attempts to create an earthly paradise are using secular and uh, uh, ideologies end up creating quite the opposite. You know, a mess. Indeed. Usually a totalitarian mess. Absolutely. Usually a bloodbath. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that we can't try together to achieve the yes. common good. Yes. And that we must, we have a commitment, we read in St. Paul's letters of the Romans and elsewhere, that the authorities of this world do have power, which yes. when they're exercising properly, yes. they exercise on behalf of God. Quite right, yes. Yeah. yes. And so those ideologies of the you know, Enlightenment and the period after that, which have proposed a kind of a strict separation between religion and the state is just impossible for a Christian. Must, as religious people, we must want to, we, we're not religious simply because we believe it's good for us. <laughs> we're going to stay in our own little corner. That's right, our own yes. little thing. We're not a tribe. No, we, no. But because we believe the principles of morality that God has given to us, including public worship and things like that, are good for everyone. For everybody. We can't force people to believe, and we don't intend to, no. or even try to. That would be ridiculous. But a state that acknowledges Christ as king is a properly ordered state. There we go. Absolutely. The social reign of Christ the, the social king. social reign of Christ now, the king. Now, if you can only remember those words, the yes. social reign of Christ the king, mm -hmm. how important it is. Um, and if, you're not, if you haven't heard that phrase before, don't worry, mm -hmm. because you probably, believe, well, you almost certainly believe it in already yes. without uh, you know, using a, a fancy title. Mm -hmm. but, but the fact that Christ reigns 
over our society yes. because we've not because we've elected him. <laughs> we don't elect a king. Yes. No, we don't elect a king. Yes. He was born for that. The Messiah yes. is the anointed one, the king, uh, who has come to save us mm. and show us the way to heaven. And therefore, you know, he represents that the yes. kingdom of God coming down here upon yes. the earth. As you say, when we try and create our own kingdoms, it usually always fails. However, yes. earthly kingdoms and states and so on should try and mirror That's the... Right. Participating. Participating. Yes. And it's got to do with the nature of law as well, you know, being a boy kind of lawyer. <laughs> you know, I, I talk about this quite a lot. But and in fact, when I teach, you know, teach the novices here, I always talk uh, start by discussing the nature of law. And so if it exists first in the mind of God as eternal law, and then when it's revealed to us, it is divine law, written in our hearts, it's the natural law, and embodied in the laws of societies, including the society of the church, it becomes human law. Law, and they should all line up. Line up, yes. And so the laws of the of, of the world, the human laws that um, the legislators and princes um, create, should line up with the divine law that's been revealed to us. Otherwise, mayhem ensues. And it's a kind of strife, isn't it? There's a kind of um, struggle to, to mm. uh, make it align. Yes. And uh, as Father began, as you began with, that you know, the, the world is imperfect, and mm. our efforts are imperfect at yes. establishing this. So we need to belong to a supernatural realm, exactly. the kingdom of God. We yes. require um, this membership we have already mm. of God's kingdom, so that we may say that we are trying to establish it on earth yes. and trying to, in a sense, belong to it. Mm. It's not that it needs us, us. Yes. it's that we need it. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I think you preached yesterday, didn't you, gone with the theme of kind of the world is passing away. Oh, yes. and, the, but the, and so there's that tension, and a wonderful creative tension in Christianity, that we are not of this world, and we realise by our baptism we've been drawn out of the world. And, but, and we realise that this world is passing away, that everything around us is temporary. But still, we have a passionate love for souls, and so we are involved in, the, in this world, even as religious, though, in a different way. We've renounced the world, but so that at least partly we can give, we obviously firstly, but we can give glory to God, but also so that we can save souls, whether through our prayer, through our apostolic work or whatever. And so as Christians, we are involved in the world and we want to uh, bring Christ to it and it to Christ. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. That was, that was the motto of one of the schools I attended, actually, was bringing Christ to all and all to Christ. Yeah. It was rather lovely. The matter of my school was Christus Vincit. Oh, brilliant. Well, we're, we're, we're on the theme then, yeah, aren't we? Christus, yeah. Christ conquers. Well, that's right. Yes. You know, and yes, Christus Vincit, Christus Reniat, yeah, Christus, Christus Imperat. Christ conquers. Christ reigns yes. and Christ commands or rules. Yes, yes. it's wonderful, it's isn't it? We sing that after benediction exactly. quite a lot. Yes, to it. to proclaim the kingdom of Christ. Yes, I, I, it actually reminds me. Speaking of music for a little bit, mm. it reminds me of the Hallelujah chorus mm. by Handel. You know, in the middle of the Messiah, there's the famous Hallelujah chorus where mm -hmm. allegedly the king stood up when he first heard it. <laughs> so a lot of people stand to sing Hallelujah, and there's that lovely bit. You know, in the middle of it. Because it goes, you know, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And, yes, it, yes. and then there's the quiet bit. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of this world is to become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Mm -hmm. And he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. Yes. Now that's marvellous. That the, the quiet bit in the middle is a reminder that the kingdom of this world, which is passing yes. away, is, claim, is to be claimed for yes. Christ. And that the kingdom of, of God... Um, we are, it is to become, in a sense, the mm -hmm. kingdom of God and of his Christ, which will only ultimately happen at the end of time, mm -hmm. when Christ comes again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Mm -hmm. say. But you know, until then, we're, we're trying to establish and build the kingdom of God, yes. seek it, I think, and build it. Um, Christ says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and yes. all these other things will you know, yeah. have to be added unto you. So we have to seek it, to build it, and uh, proclaim it. And in the Our Father, Christ teaches us to say to God, mm -hmm. we pray that thy kingdom might come. It's a yes. subjunctive, isn't it? Adveniat mm -hmm. renium tuum. Um, in fact, I think the Oxfordology has a lovely altar cloth, which during Advent, 
Mm. They put out that said, yes. Adveniat Redium Tu. Oh, wonderful. Yes. I was delighted to see that. Well done, founders of the Oxford Oxford, yes. great friends of ours. Yes. And uh, that lovely altar cloth. Uh, that, I mean, it's just wonderful to be reminded of the subjunctive. Mm. You know. it, yes, yeah. It, May it, that. <laughs> <laughs> for people at home, will be clapping their hands when you've mentioned the subjunctive. Yes. <laughs> it's not as fun as the imperfect subjunctive, but the present subjunctive is very, very, It's still lovely. Adveniat, yes. May it come. The mood of possibility. Possibility and wish and yes. hope and, and, and desire, in a sense. Mm -hmm. May thy kingdom come. Yes. I mean, hallowed be thy name is also a subjunctive. Mm -hmm. And uh, and these three are all, well, they all are, you know, mm -hmm. thy kingdom come and thy will be done. So we're praying that something might happen. It's a petition. Yes. It's a petition that the kingdom of God may arrive. Yes, yeah. And when we're thinking about, you know, this world, and we have to, as, as Catholics, we have to know that politicians who must support, especially Catholic politicians, must support, support the eternal law and do what they can to make sure that God's kingdom is reigning. Obviously, it's not about imposing our beliefs on anybody else, but, but we would want to, but doing what is good and promoting the common good, especially in areas such as life issues, where there is an imperative that as Christians and then Catholics, that we seek to protect human life, particularly unborn um, children. And it's a, it's a great imperative, you know. John, St. John Paul II spoke of the culture of death and Pope Francis and Pope Benedict have echoed that, um, that imperative that comes from Christ. Yes. And so when it comes to, as you say, kind of building the kingdom of God here on earth, those who are participating politically, you know, the lay people in the world caused, called to be the leaven of society, must bear that in mind that they, they are to try to build the kingdom of God, whether at the ballot box or whether they're in parliament yes. or on a local council or a school governor, yes. whatever it might be. It's their responsibility, your responsibility to try yes. to build the kingdom of God as you can. Don't leave it to others. Yes. We always pray for leaders and politicians, yes. don't we? Because in praying for them, we're asking that they be led by these values, yes. that they don't have a kind of odd concept of what justice and peace and yes. things are, but that they realise that the common good is to be found in the kingdom of God. Yes. Now, you know, this is a very bold statement, but it's one we have to fundamentally believe in. There is legislation which seeks to dismantle yes. the kingdom of God and tear it down, yes. and there is legislation and, and, and provision which can yes. seek to build it up. And, uh, and it's not simply enough to have a good intention, is no, it? You, you know, we can think that what you're doing is helping people. It might not yes. be helping anybody, or yes. it might be damaging, you know, you can't killing just say, someone else. I'm a devout Catholic and that's it, can you? No, you may not. No, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, God help us, because none of us are perfect exactly. Catholics. You know, two of the least perfect are sat here before you. But the point is that if you're going to say that, then you really have to you know, embody, that. embody it. And it's very difficult. I mean, we must pray for them, that because it must, there must be so many temptations yeah. at that level of work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but yes, we seek to build the kingdom of God is, is, is not easy. And, it's, no. and in fact, it's easy sometimes to to veer away from that responsibility. Yes. I don't, uh, as well as that, it's, I think it never was easy. Sometimes, no. as some um, modern Catholics, if we could consider ourselves to be modern, at least contemporary. Speak for yourself! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we might, we might um, have that, that or engage in that awful sin of nostalgia or that vice that there was a golden time. There was a, well, there may have been, yes. there may have been better times, there may have been easier times, but this is where God has put us. And so, yes, we draw from the past, absolutely, and from divine revelation as to how God has revealed himself, how Christianity has embedded itself in the culture, which is all wonderful and, and fantastic and glorious. But we are here and now and would seek to fight today's problems for Christ and in Christ, not for the world, not to try to build a perfect society, but to give glory to God and to save souls. I think you're right, and I think there's something that we can say to the political secularist sometimes mm. world of today, often secularist world of mm. today, to say that actually that when the kingdom of God was sought mm. at the level of nation states uh, and whole peoples consecrated to God and to Our Lady and, and, and to seek uh, the divine law you know, and, and implementing human law according to the divine law and so on, that there was a great flowering of culture, mm. that this actually was of benefit to the mm. whole society. We can look back at our history and see that its most glorious moments mm. were when these things happened. 
However, even those times had yes. had their disadvantages, mm -hmm. and uh, you know had elements within them which were not of the kingdom of God. Yes. Just as our own society too, you know, it's easy to tear it down and say, "Well, there's nothing of the kingdom of God in here." But of course, there is. Yes. Uh, there are good things too that a future generations may look back at us mm -hmm. and wish they had. But we can also see its deficiencies very clearly, mm -hmm. can't we? And, yeah. and, and try to. But of course, you know, the, the greatest flowerings of human mm -hmm. culture. Of, in terms of peace, prosperity, happiness, and the common good, have been when the church, you know, and the state are in harmony, yes. and the law of God is respected. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it's quite obvious, isn't yeah, it? And absolutely. of course, the greatest of our arts and our sciences and our letters have been those flourishings uh, mm -hmm. of the divine. Yes, and you find there are some contemporary thinkers, even non-Christians, who are starting to wonder whether modern society with such things as human rights, which are a product of Catholic social teaching, and things can exist in a society without a Christian basis. Is modern society, with that, is that just a veneer? And if the Christian basis of the, those things, such as human rights, has vanished, will they be able to survive for the next 20, 30, or 40 years? I'm glad they're discussing it yes. because I completely agree with them yes. you know, that, 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 that we rely, in fact, on, yes. even if we don't acknowledge the Christian mm -hmm. roots of our society, uh, we rely on them entirely. And if yes. we didn't have them or pretended they didn't exist, uh, and one thing we must, as Christians, I think, is never ever be ashamed of them mm -hmm. and never be ashamed of talking about them. We're not blowing our own trumpets. Mm -hmm. It's simply by the grace of God and His mercy mm -hmm. that we were able to, you know, write these things down and, yes. and, and make our little attempts at, 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 at how statecraft should, yes. you know, should function. And this was often inspired by great uh, Christian men and women who, yes. who really thought hard and, uh, about it and mm -hmm. sought to love God and seek, yes. seek the kingdom of God. Yes, absolutely. One of the things that comes to mind, particularly the, the Ballad de Lib debates, as they're called, but when, when the, the New World was opened up, and Europeans encounter the indigenous peoples in the New World. The question, which might seem ridiculous to us, but it's not, were, are these human beings? Do they have souls? Yes. Their cultures seem so different yes. to the 14th, 15th and 16th century Europeans that some people said, well, they're just beasts and animals, yes. therefore we can do with them what we please. But it was the church that said absolutely no, no. that these people cannot be uh, dispossessed of their lands and their properties with, with no reference and they can't yes. be put into slavery. But for instance, when the Spanish took the Canary Islands, the Pope um, st um, stepped in and threatened to excommunicate the king. Did he really? He did, yes, yeah, unless he returned them to their previous state. Now, these things weren't always followed properly by the yeah, church, sure. and perhaps not even followed up by yes. the church, but there was this absolute insistence on the dignity, as we would yes, now say, yes. of, of, of the human, of human beings. And we extend this now, well, we, we see this also in the unborn. That yes, these debates are yes. happening today. People well, exactly. deny the personhood of the unborn, yes. but again, the church is at the forefront saying, "No, these are human beings made in the image of God, and we must show respect to them." Yes, they need to speak to mothers, I think, because yes. mothers have a sense of the personhood oh, yes. of the unborn more than anyone, yes. especially mothers who've miscarried. I think yes, they, have, they have a great sense of the personhood of yes. the unborn. Yeah, that's fascinating, isn't it? That the church stepped in in those in those circumstances, and that's yes. rather good that yes. she did. Yes. Um, but it is also, uh, you know, the, the Enlightenment uh, sort of took it the other way. Mm. I'm thinking of the noble savage theory yes, of, yeah. of, of the Rousseau and the school and all yes. these people, you know, dreadful, you know, mm. you know, because they started to say that actually they might have been better off without all of our, uh, you know, European civilization. Yes. You know, they, they had a noble society of their own, but it certainly didn't. But, you know, mm. and it was all that kind of yeah, thing. It, it was a, a debate about the nature of the soul yes. and, and our need for revealed religion. Exactly, you know, yes. The whole debate was really, but do they need it? And of yes. course they do. <laughs> Our Lord was right, really, wasn't yes, he, when he said, <laughs> baptize all nations. Baptize all nations, yes. you know, yes. you know because, yes. uh, because it's, it wasn't a, a cruel imposition, mm. of, you know, um, and, you know, there has been a certain amount of conquest yes. when it comes to the spreading yes. of the kingdom of God. But it's not really about that. It's yes. not. Uh, our Lord hasn't uh, begun a military campaign. No. He may require some assistance mm -hmm. in that. But generally speaking, no. It's it's the freedom of the children of God, yes. which must be extended to all people. Yes. I wonder if we might speak about something which is very dear to your heart, mm. Father, which is Lourdes. Because yes. certainly when I, I, and I haven't been to Lourdes since I joined the order, actually, so 10 years now. 
But when I went um, as a university student with the Oxford and Cambridge pilgrimage, yes. and then as a seminarian, I thought that this is as close to seeing the kingdom of God here on earth that one could ever see. It, it, it the, the embodiment of the gospel in so many ways, isn't it? I completely it? agree. I love the sanctuary at Lourdes, and I now go most often as chaplain to the Order mm. Malta, which is always a big pilgrimage with lots of wheelchairs and lots of... Do so um, much good work for the sick and the handicapped. Oh, the sick and, and the, the poor. Operates. And of course, Lourdes is the place where the poor and the sick are the celebrities. Mm. Uh, everything is designed for their mm. accessibility. Uh, in a sense, if you go to Lourdes as an individual pilgrimage, it's beautiful and it still it belongs to Our Lady and it is just wonderful to be able to pray with her and contemplate her son. And, you know, it's the place where the Immaculate Conception was revealed and you can go on your own or with families, you can go with parish groups. Mm -hmm. But when you take the sick, mm -hmm. you realise that actually it's another layer of pilgrimage because you are fed, but in your assisting someone else by pushing their their wheelchair or their uh, their bed, their divan, whatever, to the foot of our feet of Our Lady at the Grotto, you realise what it's all about. Mm -hmm. That actually, this is the kingdom of God where the values of the world are turned on their head, exactly. and people who are the marginalised, mm -hmm. the left out, and people, I suppose, a bit of a ramp in for them. You know, th those sort of people that are seen as an annoyance, or even by the non-Christian mm -hmm. as a blot yes, on society's yes. page. These are the important ones. These yes. are Our Lady's special children. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, we can only come to her mm -hmm. by bringing some of them mm -hmm. to her, because in a sense, we, we get closer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the miracle of Lourdes, that it really is about the, the values of the kingdom of God. Did you know, by the way, that most miracles that happen in Lourdes, and of course there are many that have happened, mm -hmm. don't happen at the grotto uh, or in, the, in, the, in mm -hmm. the water, the Lourdes water? They happen at the Blessed Sacrament procession. Oh, right, yeah, that's very interesting, isn't it? Isn't that fascinating? Mm -hmm. And all the doctors that certify, um, mm -hmm. and that's why at Lourdes, when they have, I mean, please God, we'll be able to have pilgrimages again soon. Uh, when the Blessed Sacrament is uh, taken through the sick for the, bene mm -hmm. the, the, the benediction of the malades, uh, a doctor always follows the Blessed Sacrament oh, right. uh, as, as a, a witness mm -hmm. from the world, if you like, in the medical world, uh, to attest to potential miracles, mm -hmm. but also as a symbol to show that medicine can only go so far mm -hmm. and now we hand over to the divine physician to yes. do his work. Most of the miracles that Lord happen on the Blessed Sacrament Procession. Our Lady, like at Cana, says, do what he tells you and points mm -hmm. to her son. I think that's an, an amazing thing. So yes. it's, not, um, it's not that uh, you know, it's, we don't believe in magic when mm -hmm. it comes to Lord. No, we believe that these, the prayer to Our Lady, her grotto, her water, all of this is part of our pilgrimage experience mm -hmm. by holding her hand, yes. really. But she always takes us to Christ mm -hmm. and to his kingdom. And we realise that, uh, you know, in Lord, in, in that magnificent environment where mm -hmm. the vulnerable and the poor and the sick, and we all are, of course, mm -hmm. in need of healing yes, to some extent. Sinners. We're all there because we're sinners. Um, they, they take centre stage. Yes. And what would it be like if our nations and well, like that. and could you know, could embody that that where the sick and the disabled are not seen as hindrances, yes. are are not marginalised, no. are not told that they don't have a right to life or to be yes. better off if they if they went away into a quiet corner, but where we tried to serve them. They're also not pitied. Yes, indeed. They're envied in a funny sort of way uh, because they're they're seen as being privileged, mm -hmm. you know, not underprivileged. And, and, the, and of course, what results from this great overturning of worldly values to, to represent the kingdom of God is enormous joy mm -hmm. and fraternity yes. and great, you know, camaraderie and, and, and great bonhomie and what other words can you describe? I mean, just, it's a great feeling, you know. Yes, yes. And, and Lourdes is, is a place of hard work, mm -hmm. you know. It usually means for those who run pilgrimages a nightmare of organisation and uh, so that everything one runs lickety-spit and, you know, with absolute perfection. Yes. But, um, which, you know, pilgrimage groups do very, very well. Mm -hmm. So where does the order of Malta, <laughs> I mean, the military past, everything runs to absolute clockwork. Yes. But, of course... But the general experience for all involved is one of enormous joy, and most people get the plug and just have to go again next year. Yes, yes. it's hard one joy, as you said, isn't it? That's what makes it yeah, hard one all, joy. All the sweeter. Ooh. I think when we pray for God's kingdom to come, uh, we are asking, imploring Almighty God 
that this might happen mm. on a much larger scale, you yes. know, not just in the in little pockets, pockets but, but all over the world. Mm. And it points us towards, doesn't it, that second aspect of that petition, thy kingdom come, is it pointing us towards eternal life. Yes. That this world is passing away, but we're involved in it for the glory of God and the salvation of souls, but it will pass away, our lives will end. Yes. And so we're fa we're faces, we are faced with the possibility either of eternal life or of eternal damnation. Yes. Um, and we must do what we can by the grace of God to cling on to those supernatural helps that we're given to, to say no to sin and with the help of Our Lady and all the saints to grow closer to God day by day, moment by moment. We've spoken before of sanctification, all these different elements, but this petition embodies that, doesn't yes, it? Yes, I think it does, because it's not simply saying when we pray for the social reign of Christ the King that uh, we want heaven to descend here. Mm -hmm. We also know that we have one foot in eternity. Mm -hmm. yes. We have one foot in this life and one foot in eternity. And uh, that, in fact, what we're seeking to build is it will be fulfilled when we get to heaven. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we want to belong to that kingdom which lasts forever, yes. as, as we, which we believe in, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, to, I think, to pop in there is, of course, that God's <clears throat> God, God is a king, mm -hmm. is a very ancient uh, theme yes. and we and we talk about Christ the Messiah the anointed one as king of course yes but the Bible in the Old Testament was full of references to say God is king with mm -hmm. majesty and mode yes, you know yes. the Lord sits enthroned over the flood and all yes. these wonderful phrases we didn't have Israel didn't have a king to start with because no. God was their king they have they were all God was their judges king. a kind of oligarchy rather yes. than by a king but they wanted a king in imitation to the nations they wouldn't yes. they couldn't see or accept the kingship yes. of God over their their yes. nation I think when we have when, when it comes to Christ there's a restoration mm. of, of, of that hope that Israel had, which it struggled to fulfill in itself. Yes. It had a lot of bad kings, mm. as, a lot of, as well as some good ones. And, uh, and even the good ones were often flawed, yes, yeah. you know, a little like David and Solomon and so on. But, mm. but um, you know, in Christ, we have a kingdom of service, mm. the servant king who sacrifices himself, yes. uh, you know, who says to his apostles, um, in, among the pagans, their rulers lord it over them. Mm. You know, they're sort of despotic rulers, their king. It shall not be so among you. Mm. You know, the greatest among you must be as if you were the least and serve. Um, you know, the greatest among you is the one who serves. Yes. And so um, I, think it's, I think it can even be reflected in our language uh, when we talk about those in public office mm -hmm. as being our leaders or, mm. or our governors. Uh, and, and those who are, uh, you know, in power, yes. rather than saying those who are in public service, mm. or the word office, which yes. implies you know, munus in that, in that kind of uh, a gift to the to the society, yes. which is also a duty mm. or a, or a kind of and a kind of office that must be fulfilled. And uh, our public servants, mm. you know, sometimes need reminding by yes. the press or by us <laughs> that they are public servants rather yes. than self-serving, yes. <laughs> they're meant to be serving others. And of course Christ and his kingdom, you know, it, it is the antidote to, to worldly despotism, mm -hmm. that it, of course it's nothing to do with that, yes. it's not about absolute power. And Christ's kingship, when he was crowned, was at the hands of despots of this world. Yes. That he, he is crowned with that crown of thorns by the Romans and of course by the Jews as well and so that, that 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 despotic element in the world in all of us in all of our hearts came to the fore in a particularly evil way yes. and so we crucified the king of glory and so yes. the only time that he was given a purple robe was to mock him when he was given the, the crown of thorns and a reed for a scepter when he was spat at and slapped yes. and mocked um, and he reigned from the tree, from the cross. That's right. He who would be king over all souls, uh, you know, was mocked as being called the yes. king of the Jews, who themselves had said, we have no king but Caesar. Yes, yes. And I know... They wanted this despotic power, which they hated so mm -hmm. much, you know. I hope you won't look askance, Father, but that, that hymn... <laughs> Probably will. Um, um, the servant king, hands yes. that flung stars into space, 
to cruel nails surrendered. Yeah, no, it's right, yes, it's, it's quite poetic, actually. Yes, um, yes I'm not a great fan <laughs> modern hymn, a day, but, um, it is but the words yes, lovely, I'll yes. hold you to singing it later in the next <laughs> session. Uh, <laughs> no, but that's right, that he, you know, and, and the point, actually, that that hymn is making is that the ruler of all things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, consents to be, to be mocked and spat mm -hmm. upon. He said also, he respects the authority of Pilate. Yes, this yes. is a great, so our Lord isn't, he's not quibbling over earthly power. He realizes mm -hmm. that it's there, but he tells Pilate, you would, ha Pilate, you would have no power or authority mm -hmm. were it not given you from above. And uh, Pilate would say, well, are you a king then? You know, and yes, for this I was born, yes. but my kingdom is not of this world. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Our Lord is, is, is teaching, even in the, in the midst of that great mockery, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and even as the cross is raised, it says Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mystery is, of course, that he is king, not only of Israel, but of the whole world. Yes. And so when we try to extend the kingdom, when we try to preach the kingdom on earth, we should be aware that we await that we may have the same fate as our Lord and Saviour, to be spat at and mocked in this world. It, it Even happen. Christians are crucified and killed for mm. wanting, trying to promote the social reign of Christ. Mm. But yet through that crucifixion, through God becoming man and dying for us, we also have the hope of eternal life by uniting our suffering to that of Christ. And therefore the, the gates of heaven are opened by God for us um, so that we might return home. There have been persecutions in recent times specifically on this subject. You know, the Vendeans of the French mm -hmm. Revolution uh, were fighting for God and the king, mm -hmm. and they meant, they meant by that God as king as yes. well as the <laughs> King Louis. And I think the, you know, and I think of um, the Cristeros. Oh, know. yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah. You like Jose Maria Sanchez del Rio. That's right, yes, Wonderful yes. I often speak saying. about him to, um, great. to the confirmation candidates, a, a young boy who died at the age of 15. I think it was, and um, who was the flag bearer because he was so young, he begged his parents um, to be in the army, and they of course said no, not but he could possibly, <laughs> but he begged them again because his brothers were in the army, and so he was allowed to be flag bearer on a couple of processions, and sadly on one where he was holding the flag before the king, uh, the, the general, the government forces um, um, tried to take the, um, um, the, the soldiers and the general, and the general's um, horse was killed. And so Jose Sanchez del Rio gave the general his own horse um, and was captured. And he was told by one of his relatives, who was the local mayor, all you have to do to be saved is to say death to Christ the King. And so he said those words, Viva Cristo Rey. Long Viva live Cristo Rey, long, long live, live Christ the King. King. And it's yes. unthinkable that yes. someone would insist on that yes. kind of blasphemy as a, as a kind of sign of your yes. total subjection to a stately, ungodly yes. power. And when, when was it? The last century, and where was it? In a Catholic country? In a Catholic Mexico. country in Mexico, yes, in the 1920s. That's right, yeah, yeah. It's incredible, and, and there are so many stories oh, of the yes. Mexican martyrs um, who are hugely inspiring, mm. and, and yes. we mustn't forget that Central America has given the world a huge mm. gift when it comes to the proclamation of, yes. of, of the reign of Christ the King. And I think you know there were many, a lot of preaching followed that mm. um, to enthrone the Sacred Heart in homes. Mm. Um, you know there was an Anglo-Chilean priest who was very much involved in, in disseminating that devotion. Yeah. If the kind of the viewers at home are looking for a recommendation, the film that was produced a couple of years ago about the Cristeros. Oh, yes, it's known as either For Greater Gloria or Cristiada. I think it's called. Yes. Um, it is a fantastic film. You may have for Highly parents watch it before you let yes. your children watch it. Yes, parents watch it, watch it before showing it to children. Um, but it's fantastic. Yeah. It's incredibly moving. I, um, I'll never forget when we watched uh, it. Were we allowed to say this? Yes. It was the yes. Feast of Christ the King when we were studying together in Rome. Yes. Yes. And uh, we watched all the confreres of the Norbertine Generalate mm -hmm. were sat in the television room, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the darkened windows, mm -hmm. watching this film. Mm -hmm. And it ended. Yes. And the credits were rolling, yes. and we just sat in silence, yes. and there was sobbing, yes. and, it, and we were all kind of dabbing our, I couldn't believe how moving it was, yes. and then we couldn't speak, no, indeed. we were just completely dumbfounded, it's an incredible yes. story, very powerfully yes. portrayed. Yes.
Pietro Tools in it, isn't yeah, it? It's it one is. of his last films. Yes, yes, he's, he's um, here at the beginning, he's killed in his mass oh. vestments. Oh, there you go. Yes. Now, the defence of the kingdom of God and, and, you know, and our attempts to bring it about mm -hmm. may well lead to our persecution, but yes. we mustn't be uh, deterred from Blessed it. Blessed are those who are persecuted Indeed, for righteousness. The Bible said, and they'll drag you before kings yes. and Sanhedrins, and, you know, don't worry, I'll, give you, I'll tell you what to say. Mm -hmm. And I think to be ready to do that is, 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 is good and, and valid and to ask for the prayers of the saints. But it's often in small ways mm. um, that we can help re-establish the kingdom of God, the usual kindnesses, yes. the usual courtesies, yes. the acknowledgement that God is in charge, yes. that we're not in charge of our own lives, that we shouldn't seek to be the masters of our own little domains, but that Christ reigns over those things. Yes. Um, crucifixes in homes, yes. pictures of our Lord you know, um, and Our Lady in, in our homes remind us that we don't belong to this world, yes. we belong to the kingdom of God. And, and how wonderful is it that when we, the Blessed Sacrament can process through the streets, oh. even in this Protestant or whatever country or whatever it is now, that we're in, in happier times we were able to process with the Blessed Sacrament through the streets of Chelmsford. Yes, and I love our that. Our mind goes back to our Holy Father Norbert, who took the Blessed Sacrament around the, the city yes. of Antwerp, yes. in a triumphal procession, and we follow Christ, our Eucharistic yes. Lord, and King singing songs and hymns and bringing him to the people yes. so that these very streets have been touched by yes. Christ and his people singing his praises. Well, you know, it's important that we feel that Christ has walked our streets, yes. you know, that he has been here before us and so we, we must take him for a walk, as it were, mm -hmm. but we also realise that he, uh, it, it's, it's to introduce his people to him, mm -hmm. it, but him to his people, yes. to make that royal progress yes. through the streets uh, so that he can bless them. And of course the effect that it has, I think, is... Yes. is Electrifying. It's, my, it's one of my favourite days of the year. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yes. And the brass band yes. plays, silver band, as they play, <laughs> yes. and uh, you know, uh, singing, belting out the hymns yes. to Jesus' heart all burning and all this, mm. and the canopy and, uh, yes. and the children in their first communion outfits. It is a little bit like heaven on earth. It's it? wonderful. Yes. And, yet, and so many different people of every colour and every nation, you know, yes. all, all who live here and yes. are part of our community here. I think it's wonderful. It's fantastic. It's a great display of uh, the kingdom of God arriving. Yeah. And we can pray, can't we, that we'll be allowed, you know, able to do that in a few months' time. Uh, Please God. This summer, hopefully. Please God. It'll we'll be, be outside. Yes, so. we'll be able to process with our Eucharistic God oh, I do hope once so. again and to claim yes. him as king. Well, you know, like at Lourdes, we need him, yes. especially in times of sickness mm. and in times of, you know, people fear disease running the streets mm. and we want to get Christ on the streets yes. where you know no contagion can possibly come where our blessed Lord is there mm. you know the great divine healer yes so uh, we, that's absolutely what we need and uh, you know we've been so edified haven't we by those who've come to adore the blessed sacrament mm. in this time of in pandemic, this time yes. you know, we had the day of um, exposition didn't we, we? Did. Oh, was it before Christmas or it was before uh, New Year's Eve that's right it? yes yeah and uh, yes. to pray for yes. you know an end to the sorrows of 2020 yes. and, a, and a brighter 2021. Well, it is bright. It is. Yes, it is I can hardly see you. <laughs> Some <benefits. laughs> yes. It's certainly brighter, but yes. we should pray that our Lord continues yes. to uh, yes. remove the plague from yes. us. But uh, at the same time, it was a, an edifying moment. And of course, we've had uh, uh, exposition, this mm -hmm. is And for those at home unable to come, you know, we're... We are bringing your intentions yes. there. And unite and, yourselves. Uh, yes, you absolutely. And take yourselves to the tabernacle yes. in a mystical sense and in, in moments of trial say, Lord, I want to seek your kingdom. Mm. Remind me that I don't belong to this world. This world. I belong yes. to your kingdom. Yes. And, and may it come among us. May it, yes. may it be part of our reality mm. because you know, our reality is just a copy of what reality mm. really is, which yes. is the kingdom of God. That's right. And speaking of those gloriously reigning, Father, mm. we wanted to, so next week, Father Abbott is going to be joining us. I thought you were going to say <laughs> an invitation had been issued to, uh, to Windsor for Her Majesty's uh, attendance. No, yes, yeah, Father Abbott is going to join us yes. next week thy will be on done. Thy Will Be Done. Yes. So we'll have to make sure that we have a, you know, a suitable yes. Yes. Arrangement, yes. And, uh, and arrangement for yes. him. And uh, So that's marvellous. So viewers, we can all look forward to Father Abbott joining yes. us. He's been very encouraging of, yes. uh, of us, you know, and uh, yes. we know Brother Gilders is doing an awful lot of work. 
think he's why he hasn't joined us for the last show. He's going to be <laughs> If there were ever service to the kingdom of God which required uh, yes. you know, honours and decorations, it is that service of feeding the foot yes. soldiers, yes. Uh, <laughs> which must be done. Uh, as you can see, we're starving. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Father, so he's yes. working hard, but Father Abbott will be with us next week. Yes. And, uh, you know, he's very encouraging, as, a, mm. and, as are so many of our viewers. So thank you for that. Yes. And uh, we, 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 well, we ask God's blessing upon them all. Exactly. Shall we finish with prayer, Father? I think we ought yes. to, yes. We are Christians, aren't we? I mean, we do believe in all this. So, good. Let's, uh, let's say the Lord's Prayer again together. And... and uh, remind ourselves as we say it that we belong to almighty god and that this world belongs to him and we pray that his kingdom will come but we include in our intercessions all those that desperately need um, a message of hope at this time all of those who feel despair because all they can see around them is the kingdom of this world and we pray that god will reveal his kingdom to them perhaps through our efforts may almighty god make us worthy of serving his kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.